one of the most amazing truths in the Bible is the ministry of angels. As we study angels together, we've learned about the reality of angels, that they are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation, Hebrews 1 and 14. But let's talk about the army of angels. Angels are often presented in the Bible as a mighty army, a spiritual force waging spiritual warfare on behalf of the people of God. When we think about angels, we can envision them as the mighty army of God doing His work behind the scenes throughout the course of history. When Paul the Apostle writes about the mystery of redemption in sending Jesus to save us and establishing the church, he writes, His, God's intent, was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, Ephesians 3, 10 and 11. Here we see that God's wisdom is displayed even to the angels, even to the demonic powers, to these principalities and powers. These refer both to God's angels, these thrones, these mighty spiritual rulers, as well as the fallen angels, that God witnesses to the spiritual world of his wisdom in providing salvation through the cross and the resurrection. Now let's learn together about God's mighty angelic army, what they do as a part of God's army. The Bible tells us that there are two angels who are named in the Bible. Michael, the archangel, whose name means who is like God, or you could translate the name, the gift of God, Michael, the archangel. He's called the great prince who protects the people of God in Daniel 12 and 1. So Michael is the protector of God's people. The second angel that is named is Gabriel. He is the special messenger of God. Michael is the protector of God's people. Gabriel is God's special personal messenger. Now, Gabriel appeared to Daniel in his visions and also to Mary, the mother of our Lord, with the announcement of the birth of Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38 tells us the detailed story that an angel of the Lord, Gabriel, appeared to Mary and told her that she would give birth to a son, that he would be great, and God would give unto him the throne of his father David. And she welcomed that angelic message, how startled she must have been as a young woman with such a strange, unusual announcement of a special birth that only she and Joseph would share and really understand. But it was Gabriel, the special messenger of God. The message of Jesus coming was so important that God sent Gabriel to Mary. And the visions of Daniel, when he sees coming history of the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire and later the Antichrist Empire, all that Daniel foresaw of history, that is, some of it's been fulfilled and some of it's yet to come, it was Gabriel the angel who appeared to Daniel because those visions of the future were so important. Well, second of all, in this army, we read about the angel of the Lord. That's a technical term for this powerful angel, the angel of the Lord. And the word Lord there in the Hebrew is Yahweh, which is the covenant name of God, the angel of Yahweh, the angel of Jehovah, you could translate that name. Now, the angel of the Lord himself appears 65 times in the Old Testament. He's also called the angel of God. That's the Hebrew word Elohim for God, like in the beginning God, in the beginning Elohim, the basic name of God. He's also called the angel of God 15 times. And once he's called the angel of the covenant in Isaiah 63 and 9. He acts as the personal representative of God when he appears. So we have Michael, the archangel in this army. We have Gabriel, the special messenger. We have the angel of the Lord, who's God's personal representative, who appears to humanity at times. Then we read about the guardian angels. First of all, there are the cherubim. Now, they first appear in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned and they were driven from the garden, driven from paradise. And the Bible says that God guarded the way to the tree of life by these two mighty cherubim. They had these flaming swords. They first appear. 
We also see them around the throne of God in the Bible. The story of the angels, the cherubim guarding the way to the tree of life is found in Genesis 3, 24. Now, when they built the temple of God and in it, they had the Holy of Holies and in it, there was the Ark of the Covenant, had the beautiful golden top to it where they would use that once a year on the Day of Atonement. But on top of the Ark of the Covenant, the lid was called the mercy seat. On the top of that solid gold cover of the Ark of the Covenant, there were two angels fashioned in pure gold and their wings, they face each other and their wings were pointed at each other and they're looking down as if they're looking at something inside the Ark of the Covenant because that's where the Ten Commandments were placed and they're looking at the law of God. So they appeared in the temple. So let's recap this mighty army. We have Michael, the archangel, Gabriel, the special messenger of God who appeared to Daniel and Mary. We have the angel of the Lord, God's special representative. We have the cherubim of God guarding the holiness of God. Then we have the worshipers. They're called seraphs or literally burning ones. The word seraph or seraphim means the burning ones like flames of fire. They're the ones who worship God in heaven and proclaim holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory in Isaiah 6, verse 1 through 8. Now, they're very similar and may even be the same as what's called the four living creatures around the throne of God in the book of Revelation, who also proclaim holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty who was and is and is to come, Revelation 4 and 8. There they're called the four living creatures. And they resemble the same seraphs as they're called in the Old Testament. Then we have the guardian angels. Jesus writes about guardian angels in Matthew 18, verse 10. He talks about the little ones, children, have an angel who watches over them. And this reference is one of the references where we understand something of the mystery of a guardian angel. So the angel of the Lord watched over Peter in prison under King Herod and led him out. The apostle Peter was arrested, put in prison early on in the the church when the government was trying to silence the gospel and the Sanhedrin was trying to silence the gospel. So he gets thrown in jail and told not to preach anymore. Well, the early church gathered for a prayer meeting there in Jerusalem. They're praying that God would deliver him. And the Bible says the angel of the Lord came into the prison and opened the prison door. And Peter just walked out of the jail. Nobody was guarding. Nobody was on duty, perhaps. And he goes to Mary's house where the church was having his prayer meeting. And he knocks on the front door. And a girl named Rhoda goes to the door and sees him and is shocked that it's Peter and leaves him standing outside and goes back and tells everybody, Peter is at the door. And they said, that can't be possible. It must be his angel. That's found in Acts 12 and 15, one of the funny stories of the Bible. They were praying for God to deliver him, and God delivered him, and they couldn't even believe it. How many of you have ever prayed for something that was so amazing you almost couldn't believe God answered your prayer? A strange story, but they said his angel. They believed in angels so much, they thought it was his angel representing him, coming to give them a message, perhaps. Now, the Bible also talks about the fallen angel. There was a mighty angel from what we learn in Scripture, named Lucifer, now called Satan also in the Scripture, or the devil. The Lucifer, the son of the morning, was an angel of God. But the Bible tells us of the story of his fall, his rebellion against God. And Paul the Apostle tells us that he, quote, masquerades as an angel of light in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Jesus described the fall of Lucifer. He said in Luke 10 and 17, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You can read more about the fall of Lucifer in Isaiah 14. Now that chapter is interesting. It's what we call a dual prophecy. It's really a prophecy about the king of Babylon who had taken the Jewish people in exile and God was going to dethrone him. He talks about his pride and his arrogance. But when you read the story, It also resembles the fall of Lucifer as though God is using the fall of Lucifer to refer to the pride and arrogance of the king of Babylon. Paul will later allude to that in 1 Timothy 5 when he talks about the ministry of elders and deacons that you shouldn't put a man into those ranks of service prematurely. Should not be a recent convert, Paul says, or they may become conceited like the devil. 
and fall under the condemnation of the devil. There again, he's alluding to the arrogance. And Isaiah talks about, O Lucifer, son of the morning, who said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. That's the angels. I will exalt myself above the throne of God. I will be like the Most High. And God cast him down. And Paul calls that the condemnation of the devil, the conceit, the arrogance of Lucifer who wanted to usurp the throne of God to take control of the angels of God. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. In heaven, we read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 22, that there are thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Well, that would equate to millions. Thousands upon thousands would be millions of angels. In other words, an innumerable host of these mighty creatures So angels are real, and they're sent to serve the heirs of salvation. And in this mighty army, we see different kinds of angels who do different kinds of service at God's command. We see the special angels, the ones who are named Michael, the archangel, the protector of God's people, Gabriel, the special messenger of God, the angel of the Lord who's God's special representative. We read about the cherubim around the throne of God, who guard the holiness of God, who cry, holy, holy, holy. The seraphs as well that Isaiah saw in worship before the Lord. The four living creatures around the throne that John the Revelator saw when he was transported to heaven and saw these living creatures for them right around the throne of God, celebrating the holiness of God. And tragically, we read about the fallen angel, Lucifer, who's still at work in the world as an evil spirit warring against the people of God. Lucifer, the son of the morning, calls Satan our enemy or the devil, one who slanders and accuses and blasphemes God, one who became so full of pride that God cast him out of heaven. And one day he'll meet his final judgment. He's been defeated by the redemption of our Lord Jesus on the cross, a defeated foe. We have authority over that fallen angel. And we see that in heaven, when we catch a glimpse of where we're all going to be one day, when this life is over, we come to a place in heaven, a heavenly Jerusalem, Hebrews 12 and tells us. We come to the spirits of righteous people made perfect, the redeemed who are there. And in heaven, there are thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Every time we gather together, you know the word church means an assembly, a gathering of God's people. Going to church is more than a metaphor. It's true. God's people come together. That's what makes a church is the gathering of God's people. That when we worship here on earth, that we're connected to the worship in heaven. Think about that. Even as we worship in a beautiful sanctuary as ours, some of you that worship online, that as we're worshiping and praising God, we become part of that joyful assembly in heaven, crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. The most important truth about the angel that I can tell you is Psalm 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Rest assured that the angel of the Lord camps around you and your family and your home and your property and your life and he will deliver us. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the understanding of these mysteries of these great spiritual beings you send to serve us and protect us in ways that we never see. But as we study the word, we become aware of the fact that you are always with us, that you attend to our needs, and you protect us with the mighty angels of God. Bless your people, I pray today in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Do me a favor today. I want you to subscribe to my podcast. Do it now if you haven't subscribed. And make sure you share the podcast with others, with your friends, with your family. Let's get as many people as we can to listen to the Word of God to help them grow in their relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sunday's coming. I'm looking forward to seeing you and your family in church. We've got a great day planned. I also want to thank you for your prayerful support of the ministry and serving in the ministry of the church and for your generous financial report. Wherever you are in the world today, if you are part of Mount Perrin, then your tithes and offerings are important to help us continue to grow the ministry and reach out to the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you've not become a giver yet, pray about giving and supporting the work of the ministry. God will bless you richly. 
for your giving and your support and your service. I love you. I'm praying for you. May you have a great day.